Are you a pesticide registrar? Then this video is for you. Do you receive large pesticide registration dossiers and are you not always sure how to best evaluate all these data? Do you want to get information on how to extrapolate biological efficacy data from one pest species to another? Do you need to evaluate the risk of a pesticide to pollinators and are you looking for relevant methods to do so? Are you in the process of assessing possible exposure of farmers to a pesticide? And do you want to compare the outcome of different computer models? These are topics that are covered in the assessment methods module in the FAO Pesticide Registration Toolkit. You will find the assessment methods module under the registration tools in the left hand menu. The assessment methods module provides you with guidance on various methods, procedures and models that are available to evaluate specific parts of the pesticide registration dossier. Assessment methods have been grouped under various categories in the toolkit. They range from identity and physical chemical aspects of the pesticides to its effects on non-target organisms. By clicking on Make a Selection in the left-hand menu, you open a search page that can be used to find specific assessment methods. Here you can use various drop-down lists to make the right selection. You can find data requirements for specific pesticide groups chemical pesticides, which are mainly the conventional synthetic pesticides, biochemical pesticides covering products such as pheromones and attractants, microbial pesticides which consist of microorganisms such as fungi, bacteria or viruses, and botanical pesticides, naturally occurring chemicals extracted from plants. The toolkit does not include plant incorporated protectants, such as crops that are genetically modified to resist insects. Now let's assume that we need an assessment method for a chemical pesticide. Various categories of assessment methods can be chosen. For instance, analytical methods or environmental fate. Let's find methods for the evaluation of a pesticide on human health. We narrow our search down by selecting a subcategory. For impact on human health, these include hazard identification and classification, or bystander and residential risk. As an example, let's select methods for the assessment of the occupational risk of a pesticide to operators in agriculture. When the subcategory is selected, a table appears at the bottom of the page showing the different assessment methods that have been included in the toolkit for this particular topic. Methods are shown in relation to the resource levels available at the registration authority. Whenever possible, the Pesticide Registration Toolkit provides assessment methods at different levels of complexity, starting with relatively simple methods requiring fewer resources. More complex but more precise methods can be chosen as the Registration Authority, over time, increases its staff, resources and capacity for pesticide evaluation. For our example of an occupational risk assessment, four assessment methods are listed in the table. As we move down in the list, the methods become more complex. They will require more data, more staff time, more technical capacity and often also more financial resources. However, the methods also become more precise. The risk estimates obtained with more complex methods will generally better reflect the local circumstances of use of the pesticide. On the other hand, if we decide to use a relatively simple method, we should realize and accept that the outcome may have greater uncertainties. In the entire assessment methods module, we present pesticide evaluation methods at different levels of complexity. The pesticide registrar can choose the method which is most appropriate for its purpose and most feasible based on the resources that he or she has available. Now let's have a better look at one of the methods, conducting a local risk assessment using an operator exposure model. The method page has different sections. The principle of the method, which summarizes what is being assessed and how this is done. Next is the model section that lists the various operator exposure models that can be accessed. In principle only models or methods that have been reviewed and considered reliable by independent institutions are included in the toolkit. Under data required, a list is provided of the data or information that are needed to conduct the assessment. 
procedures summarizes very briefly the different steps of the assessment. And finally, interpretation of the outcome provides guidance on how to best understand the possible outcomes of the assessment. Most of the methods and models that are listed in the toolkit are not included in the toolkit itself. They can be downloaded or viewed on the websites of their makers. This ensures that the most recent version of the methods are available to you. You see that two operator exposure models are listed here. Whenever links to models are provided in the toolkit, a short summary of the main scenarios and assumptions underlying the model is provided. This helps you to better understand whether the model is appropriate for the specific evaluation you want to conduct. This is demonstrated here for the EFSA calculator. The summary opens in a separate window, so you can consult it while still reading through the method page. Clicking on the model link will take you to the web page where the model is described. In this case, the relevant page at the European Food Safety Authority. You can download the model here and also find a user manual. On each method page on the procedures, you will find an assessment summary table. This table can be used to summarize the evaluation. The table opens as a Microsoft Word document. After you fill out a table, you have to save it to your computer with a unique name. Be aware that the toolkit does not store any data on the website. If you do not save an assessment summary table to your PC, you will lose its contents. We have now briefly gone through the assessment methods module in the toolkit. Of course, there are many more methods than only those for occupational risk assessment that we just discussed. However, they all follow the same format. I suggest that you get more acquainted with the tool by just trying it out. You will see that you will quickly find it easy to navigate the tool and locate information about relevant methods and models for your pesticide evaluations. The Pesticide Registration Toolkit is work in progress. We will continue to update the assessment methods tool with new information, more extensive background pages and new links to models and other relevant documents. Whenever you have questions about this tool or suggestions for improvements, do not hesitate to contact the toolkit team at FAO by clicking the feedback button.